going on? Uh, I'm KC. You, you know what I'm saying? You can follow me on Instagram at KSweez. That's K-A-S-W-E-E-Z-E. -E. Uh, I'm a photographer, uh, film developer, videographer, whatever you need me to be. Kind of do all types, you know what I'm saying, things in that medium. Um, yeah, I'm just here, you know what I'm saying, looking to keep working, connect, and everything. Yes, sir. So that was going to be my first question, right? I didn't want to get into questions behind photography or videography because I, I don't want to pigeonhole you to one lane. Yeah. When people give you like an elevator pitch, how do you like describe yourself to them? Like, do you give them that whole spiel or do you have like a, a one hit or quitter? Uh, I think I got like a spiel, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I tell them basically what I just said, I'm, I'm, whatever you need me to do, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you need, I'll let you know what I can do for you and I, and I do that. But um, yeah, I, I don't like being, uh, I guess, categorized or more. I, I like to say I'm a photographer, but same time, I do it all, you know? Okay, okay. And I know a lot of people are like, why are you sitting down with a photographer? Like, really, all they do is point and shoot. But I feel like it's a real big difference in, like, the pictures you see on Instagram, you know, like, the type of photographers you're booked to do, like, a birthday shoot versus, yeah. like, art and, like, scenes and a certain image or a certain, like, I guess feeling that you're trying to persuade or, or convey to your people. Yeah. So like, how do you pretty much like come up with your concepts for your shoots? Like, cause I, I seen your Instagram and it's dope as fuck. I'm like, appreciate like, it. Like, do you do you reach out to these people? Are they reaching out to you? Like, hey, I got this shoot idea, and you know, y'all go yeah. from there. How does it, how does it start off? I say reaching out is more of a it's more of a mix. Sometimes people reach out to me. Sometimes I reach out to them. Uh, you know, that's kind of where uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, collabs kind of going hand in hand. You kind of got to know what you what you get now or what you gonna, you know what I'm saying, help with. Uh, I got I, I say for the most part that concept wise, I kind of use whatever I see around me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm big into vinyl, so I, I see like album covers or whatever vinyl covers. I use that um, music. You know what I'm saying? How I'm feeling. I use that to kind of uh, in my mind to portray an image. And then I know, like, when I'm, when I, I imagine those things, I go and I, I search through those people, or I think in my mind who fits this character, mm -hmm. and that's when I, I go out and I reach out to these people. That's dope. That's dope. So my next question would be like, damn, I lost my train of thought. But um, my next question is like, if that's the case, then are you turning down certain jobs? Like when people come to you like, hey, I got this idea for a photo shoot. Do you turn down certain work because you don't want your brand or your image to be kind of like off off its rocker a little bit? Mm. Like have you ever turned down a shoot? Yeah, I actually have turned down a shoot. Uh, I kind of try to do everything, but some things it's just uh, I don't have time for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you kind of you got to know. Uh I'm all about getting, you know what I'm saying, making money and, and uh, different opportunities and stuff. So if I see, like, the opportunity is good for me, then I'll take it. But for the most part, yeah, if it's not, like, in my vision or if it's something that I just wouldn't put out, I definitely, I don't, I don't like to do that. I like to keep my my my, my page, my, my uh, portfolio, I like to keep it, like, me, my idea and everything. Mm. Okay, so my next question is, is this something, like, Kind of just tell us a story about how you even got into photography. Like, is this something that you needed to pay the bills or yeah. something that you was passionate about and you was doing for free until it started making you money? So I say how I got into it. Like, I, I kind of always been around cameras. I ain't, I ain't even realized it for real. Like, my mom, she even owned a uh, portrait studio in the flea market at one point. And uh, I would help her out on the weekends, you know what I'm saying, being there, buying up all the Yu-Gi-Oh cards from the little <laughs> other people and stuff. But um, that's the first time I kind of, like, seen it. Mm -hmm. But I'd say I got into it because um, I remember being in high school, I was really into, like, fashion and everything. But I was making beats, and, and I was focused on music and stuff. Uh, that was my main focus. And a lot of people wasn't taking the music serious, so I was rapping on my own beats and everything. You know what I mean? Um, oh, cool. <laughs> all right, so we just keep going on this one. But uh, so I'll be, uh, yeah, like I was saying, so I'll be, uh, I was rapping on my own beats and everything, and I say, oh, uh, what happened was I remember I was in class and everything, and I had failed a couple classes. I had to switch, I had to switch classes. What and, school was you going to at the time? Uh, this is high school. This is high school of Great Bridge, mm -hmm. uh, out in Chesapeake. Um, I went to Great Bridge too. Okay. <laughs> so, 
I had uh, yeah, I had failed, failed a couple classes or whatever, and then I ended, ended up picking some classes or whatever, and I ended up in a photography class. And I took one in middle school. Oh uh, yeah. You know? uh, I said yeah, you know what I mean. So I I started doing. I messed with the cameras. Me and my boys mess around with some fashion stuff. So we kind of just, you know, what I mean, uh, just went away with that. And then I just kept working. People kept asking me to take pictures and everything. Mm-hmm. And then back then it was high school, so we was doing parties and stuff like that. Okay. So you know what I mean. So I was taking pictures and parties and everything. So how do you feel like you transitioned from like a freelance photographer, somebody that's more professional, more respected in the game? Do you feel like what kind of small things or intricate you know maneuvers mm-hmm. did you make to really like separate yourself from everybody else underneath? Okay, I think I think the first thing I, I kind of really did was like kind of look at my worth, like what I thought I was worth, mm-hmm. and set my price and kind of like, you know, being consistent with that. You know, that's, a, that's the hardest thing to do. Um, especially when you first start out, you're trying to jump at opportunities and everything. You just got to know your worth. And, 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 um, I think that's what I did. I sat down and said, I'm putting out this type of content. Mm-hmm. I deserve this. And um, that's kind of the start of it. And then as people continue to hit me up, I kept consistent, you know what I'm saying, with, with my prices and everything. And I... Through that, I lost. I lost customers. I lost probably lost opportunities and everything. But at the same time, like now that you know, what I'm saying those same people come back when they mm-hmm. see me progress. So it's like, okay. Now, would you feel like there is a certain type of like photographer that you're trying to emulate? Like, who are your inspirations in the game? I wouldn't say I would try to emulate anybody, but I definitely have some inspirations. Um, uh, a lot of y'all know I'm a I'm a film photographer. So uh, you probably seen like Vulandez and uh, William Verbeck on uh, YouTube and everything, and that's mm-hmm. who I kind of uh, structure my the desire for film off of. But um, as far as like the mental of it, I definitely look at like Vulandez as as part of like documenting what I see. Uh, I remember I used to get like a lot of not backlash, but uh, people a lot. Some people would be like, I only see you uh, post black people. You know what I'm saying? That's who I see. You know what I'm saying? So it's not that at first it started. I wasn't. I wasn't just trying to shoot only black people. I'm just only around black people. You know what I mean? That was gonna be one of my questions. Do you feel like what you do is considered, like you incorporate black culture into your work, or mm-hmm. it's it's just naturally that way? Like, I don't. Do you feel like you're only taking black people's shoots because they kind of align with your vision, or you just open to whoever? Yeah, I feel like I feel like for the most part, yeah, it's gonna align with my vision. There's other things that don't. You know, I also do like. Uh, uh, maternity shoots and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, but at the same time, yeah, you know, I, I do the shoots. I, I'll shoot anybody, but for when, when it comes to like my portfolio or my my Instagram and stuff like that, I try to keep it like a black space. Mm, okay, man. Um, as far as incorporating that into your work, hmm. my next question will be like, is there anybody whose work that you've seen that you're like, wow, that's amazing. Like besides, you know, the, the two that you said, but is there any one shoot that you saw that you was like blown the back by? Let me see. And, and, and really, I only asked that question because like there's so many different, like I was trying to get my Instagram posts yeah. like put on, I don't know if it was Instagram or Apple's page when it was like shot by iPhone. Okay. It might've been Apple's Instagram. I missed that. Where you'll take the picture off your iPhone. This is back when probably like the, eight or nine came out, 10 came out, or there was like, yo, the camera's so good that <laughs> if you drop that hashtag shot on an iPhone, yeah. they'll put it on their Instagram, you know? So I was taking some pretty dope pictures, yeah. and I'm like, yo, without no filter or nothing, I'm just posting these online, like, I'm like, I could get some good traction off of these. But yeah, um, my question with that is like, would you sign to a, like a, a company, per se, and like shoot all their content, like National Geographic or something like that. Yeah, I would. Maybe not uh, maybe National Geographic. <laughs> maybe not National Geographic, but like, uh, yeah, I was signed to a company. I was signed to like artists, or you know what I'm saying. Uh, it's just as long as it kind of like I can I can do that and still do my own own type of thing on the side. But as long as everything aligns, you know, and I can continue to do my art and um, kind of like express, you know what I'm saying, what's going on in my head. I'm cool with that. Okay, okay. Now you said something earlier, and I want to just clarify. Like, what's the difference between like, I guess, regular photography and film photography? Mm. 
there really I can't say there is a difference, but I, the only really difference is technology, just how things are shot and uh, what you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? Like some people just really love the, you know, the the, the vintage look. Of it. That's what they they want to call it. Um, for me, I I, that, I liked it. I remember when I first started shooting, I was editing pictures and I was adding grain to it. I was mm -hmm. doing this and doing that, and not even realizing that I was like trying to emulate film. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then I started looking at, um, I found a camera for $12. I was going to use it as a prop. I wanted to know how to, you know what I'm saying, get, the, get it working. Mm -hmm. So I, I took it to a camera store. Dude told me, you need this, this, and that. You know, it cost me $5 to get it working. He helped me out with a roll of film and everything. From there, I just. $5 to get it working. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? That's crazy. And that's why I do my thing now. Like, from there, I just kind of, like, you know, branched off, started doing my own thing. And um, I got into developing film. I'm, I even developed for local artists out here now. Okay, so like you developing like, I want people to really be clear in what you're saying. When you say developing film, mm -hmm. you don't mean movies or documentaries oh, or no, videos. No, no. You mean like you're taking their pictures and developing it on the film and mm -hmm. you really it's still stills, right? Yep. Okay, okay. Yep, photography, just that old classic way of, you know what I'm saying, film, that old classic way of film and everything. Mm. Man, that's dope. All right, cool. So what would you say is like the, the most uncomfortable situation you were in behind your camera? Mmm, the most uncomfortable Because I hear a lot of Godzilla stories about, like, you'll do a whole shoot, or, like, how do you feel about that thing that happened a couple of weeks back? Like, the guy, I think it was, I don't remember where they were, but it was on, like, all over social media where this photographer came and shot a wedding. Mm -hmm. and they didn't give him a plate. <laughs> like, they was oh. like, yeah, you can't eat. Like, you, you just here to do the job. And so he deleted all the pictures. <laughs> like, <laughs> How you feel about something like that? Like, have you ever dealt with somebody who was like just rude out the ass? But it's like, yo, you here to like you're kind of contracted to do this job. You're not. Yeah. Like, I know photographers. A lot of people who are hired in that realm take a lot of shit. So like, yeah. what's, some, what's some of the things you've ever dealt with? I think shoot, I ain't really had to deal with too much of that. I, that's very like you know that wedding photography. That's very like business. You know what I'm saying? That's very, I'm here for two hours. Or I'm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, for most part, I haven't really done, dealt with much of that. I feel like uncomfortable-wise is um, <laughs> is doing, like, uh, shoots with, like, babies and, and small children. That's mm -hmm. that's because, you know, that's not me. Like, I'm I'm not a baby person. I ain't, you know what I mean? <laughs> I ain't the biggest baby guy. So, like, babies be crying and everything. Um, I, I'm just not the subject matter expert mm -hmm. in babies, you know? But I kind of find a way to finesse it, but at the same time, I just know that ain't my thing. Mm -hmm. And I know some people who, who do maternity shoots and like baby shower shoots solely. Like that's mm -hmm. all they do, because they're good at it. They're good at getting the kid to like look in this direction and smile or something like that. So, I mean, if you had a perfect world, if you had to choose like your ideal client, what would that person look like? Like what type of work would you be shooting for? My ideal client, what I'm trying to work to, young thug. <laughs> At least I play. It. But for real, I, I, that's where I want to get into. I want to uh, get into shooting uh, celebrities, but not as in like a celebrity shooter where I'm going out to these uh, events. I want to be on like a more personal level, like a portrait. You're just following them around. Um, more like, you know, hey, I'm in VA doing this show. We're going to set up a shoot and we mm -hmm. go to a studio and we do a shoot. Portraits, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Real kind of like. The intimate where I can kind of, you know, mm -hmm. capture this person's, like, you know, uh, personality and everything. Now, did you shoot anything at Something in the Water? No, nah, I was actually still living in California at the time. Well, I'm telling you, I know a lot of people who were shooting out here at the time, and they, I feel like that's an avenue to really get you, like, all right, cool, you're not buying the ticket, you're not getting general admission, mm -hmm. but you can stay in between the crowd yeah, and, yeah. And, the, and the service out there. So I, I think that's dope. But, um... Do you feel like you're in the right town for something like that? Because I know a lot of people are like, anything that has to do with film or video or stuff like that, they'll move to New York or California. So do mm -hmm. you feel like you have a lane here? I feel like I do, and I feel like I'm trying to get it back. Um, I was living in California for a little bit. I just ain't like it over there. Mm -hmm. um, what I did see in California is, and what I kind of compared to here is Oakland. Oakland is very black. Very like cultural. Um, they kind of got like, to me, they kind of got like a, a vibe like here. But they just more established, so they, you know, what I'm saying they've been around. Yeah, years. they they they're confident because they know they, you know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. us, we confident. We know we we know what we what we do. But I don't think a lot of um, 
people outside of Virginia really know too much. Oh. I think that festival really did it, though. You know, mm -hmm. like, unfortunately, it won't be back. We talked about this the last time we was on, but hey, I think like Virginia has a lot of talent. Bro. Yeah, like, just all the people who's already been here, and all the people you see coming up now. Like, there's a lot of people out here, you know. Like, yeah. and I feel like it's cool having the military here because you always bring in a new crowd of people. Yeah, like, right. There's always young blood, young energy coming in and out, you know. So, like, do you feel like staying in this town? For that reason to always keep you employed or do you feel like it's a seasonal thing where you kind of have to like come in and out like travel yeah. network get your name out there yeah i feel like anywhere you go especially doing like this type of work you know you're gonna be traveling and everything um i like it here i'm comfortable here i, I like the i like the feeling of um being part of that growth of virginia mm -hmm. but like yeah i'm not, I'm not gonna um like if i see opportunity elsewhere or uh you know, or I, I need to travel, I'm definitely going to get on that road, mm -hmm. do my thing. Okay, so, man, I want to talk about Astro Fest. How Ooh. you feel about what happened there this weekend? Because as, as somebody who's who would who would have been an employee at an event like that, do you feel like Travis did wrong? He should have hired more help? Like, who do you feel is liable, culpable in situations like this? Because I've seen a video of this girl tapping a photographer on the shoulder, like, yo, stop the show, stop the show, this guy's over here. But it's like, everybody is contracted out individually to yeah. do a certain job, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, who am I to save the day by, I mean, I'm gonna turn my camera off, ain't nothing gonna happen after that, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, how do you feel about things like that in, in bigger, larger event type situations? I feel like that was just, that was definitely unfortunate, you know what I'm saying, sorry to hear. I think, um, that's a hard one because it's like that got to be, who, you know, whoever set that up because everybody, like, individually, photographers, like, we, we kind of know, like, that's what that's what Travis Scott do. You he know what I'm saying? He get turned. That's, that's what, he, and that's what they, people want. He, and they, they know people are going to break down the barricades. They know this happens every time. Every time. And you know what I'm saying? So, like, somebody has to be to blame, but, like, I just think a lot of people already knew. You know what I'm saying? What kind of stuff happens? It was just unfortunate that all of this happened. And, and to be honest, I really do feel like black artists get a unfair Ooh. claim at their shows because, like, mosh pits happen a lot yeah. at a lot of different shows. A lot of people get hurt. And I'm not going to say a lot of people die, but I'm sure it's happened before. I'm sure this yeah. is the first time somebody died at a concert. So for it to be, like, you know, like, Travis is promoting violence and negativity right. and all this. I'm like, yo, people literally go to concerts to beat the shit out of each other. You yeah. know, so, like, it just kind of baffles me how much, like, responsibility certain people got to take. But I'm like, hey, it comes with the craft, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely crazy. And if you know, like, people who know me know Travis Scott is one of my, you know what I'm saying, favorite artists. Mm -hmm. So definitely, like, man, man. Okay, so, like, do you feel like you do most of your work at the shoot? Or afterwards in editing post. Afterwards post. Why you say that? Post. Um, there's just so much that goes into it. Like, you know, it's as far as like, you know, editing could be hours depending on what you're working on, video, uh, photo. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Especially with my work. Uh, I feel like my work is very specific to like that shoot. I'm at a a, a filter person. I don't just drop the same filter on the photo. You don't I, have presets. I, I, I mess around, but I don't I don't like to do that a lot. I like okay. to, you know, especially working with film, where uh, a lot of stuff is very inconsistent. It can be, mm -hmm. you know. I, I, I edit differently for every shoot, so I put a lot of time into it. Okay, so you have to really let me understand this, because film is analog, meaning you ain't plugging your camera into the computer. Right. So what does that process look like? You take a picture on the analog, mm -hmm. you know, camera, you pull the film out, then what? So you got your, you know, you take your photos, you fill the whole roll of film up and everything, mm -hmm. and then you got that canister. Um, you take it to a lab where they, in the dark, you know, complete darkness, they take that film out, um, they put it in the canister, how they do it. Well, I do the same thing. I, can, I have videos on, on actually how to do, how to develop your own film and everything on, on YouTube. YouTube channel? I, do, I do, I do. I'm going to put all those links down below. Bad, appreciate it. But yeah, um, yeah, they put it through some chemicals or whatever, and then they hang the dry, and you and the images will appear. You know, mm -hmm. after that, that's when you get into scanning. 
Okay. Just scan the flat bit so scanner. You're using kind of like a regular old printer scanner. Uh you have to have one that's like, like see through. Yeah, I got more of a high end scanner. Um, you know, but it's a flat bit. It's it's about this big. It's not nothing too crazy. Mm -hmm. But there's also ways you can get around it. You could take. You can use your, your phone to take mm -hmm. pictures. You After know what I'm saying? Fact, right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, how do you get it from the physical picture that it was developed on onto people's iPhones and mm -hmm. computer screens? So like. It could just you could just snap a picture after the fact, use yep. a scanner. I mean, that's dope. That's dope. I mean, it's easy to understand now. Yeah. So, like, which do you prefer, video or stills? Oh, that's a hard one. I I gotta say, uh, I have to say stills, but I do like video. Not mm -hmm. even gonna hold you. I do like video. Um, as far as video, I like music videos. I think that's mm -hmm. why. You know, I haven't done much of that recently, but. I do enjoy doing music videos. It's time to. So you've done a music video before. Mm -hmm, I did what a couple of. What does that look like? Because I've, I'm starting to edit my own videos on the pod and stuff like that, and it's really just conversation. I just you know cut to whoever's talking at the time. Yeah. But a music video is very like commercial like like seven yeah. seconds here, two seconds there, three seconds there. I know it takes a lot as far as like going from location to location. So like, mm -hmm. what are those experiences like for you? Uh, those experiences are cool, you know. You meet a lot of good people. You know, usually, a lot of people at music videos. I think um, you just gotta stay organized, mm -hmm. you know. And that's not just on your part. You know, your client has to be organized too, you know. But it's kind of up to you to kind of like, I don't want to say control everything, but like, you want you want to be able to. Your client asks you to do something, you gotta be able to put it out. So it's important that you kind of like stay on everybody. You know, saying all right. We shot our 30 minutes here. Now let's go on to the next location. You know, okay. you got to be very, you got to be able to vocalize these things. Because, I mean, a music video in the moment, like the artists and all their friends having fun. Like, yeah. you're just going to listen to the song over and over again in front of the camera. It'll be yeah. on you to get them to move to a different location. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard not to get, you know, start having fun too, you know. Cause mm -hmm. lot, there's a lot of good people. That's what I'm saying. I shoot my people. So, okay. you know what I mean? So, uh, usually people are a lot more welcoming, you know. That's what's up. That's what's up. So what would you say is the, um, what are your rules? Like, what are your hard limits as far as, like, this is what you tell every person before a shoot when they when they're trying to book you? I want to say I have any hard rules. It just kind of, like, for the most part, everything, I, I, I want to use all of my content, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I think that's the biggest part. I, I use everything that I shoot, I use, you know? Some some stuff is a little bit more intimate, and you know, and that's like a case by case. We talk, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'll talk, but that's like my biggest thing is being able to use my work. Okay, and so contractually, you just letting them know, like, hey, I have rights to this too, you know? Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Okay, so I mean, I feel like a big thing behind photography is that people pay the money, right, and then say, this is what I want from you, right, and then. Have you ever had somebody who you turn your work into and they're like, this is what I was looking for? Was it or was? Wasn't. Like, they were disappointed? I wouldn't say disappointed, but I have had, like, um, clients say that I wanted it more like this. And uh, depending on what it was, like, I, for the most part, I, you know what I'm saying, I try to fix everything. There's some work that, uh, you know, when you come into a photographer's page, and you know what I'm saying, and you like their work, you, you're asking for their work. I think that's one thing to keep mm -hmm. in mind. Uh, I think people or clients, uh, they kind of like see a photographer and think, all right, he, he has a camera. He can do exactly what, what I want, I want him. him to do. But that's not how it works sometimes, you know what I'm saying? I, if you, you're coming to this person for his work. If you wanted that person's work, you might have wanted, wanted to go to them, you know? Um, but, yeah, I have had times where it's just kind of like uh, – I. We're, we're, it's working, it's tweaking a little bit, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I try to do that free. If it, if it, you know what I'm saying, it's too much, a little bit more, then it will work out price. Okay. You know? Okay. Now, what lessons do you feel like you've learned, you know, throughout your years in the game? Like something you can impart on somebody who's getting into photography or, or interested in the lane? Mm, definitely lessons. I say um, just like use your equipment, master your equipment before you start buying equipment. You know, uh, like a so master what you already have and what you can afford before mm -hmm. you go online and be like, what's the best photography equipment you get? Like the ten thousand dollar equipment, yeah, and like just be stuck either with a high bill or not knowing how to use it. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I mean. So, like, do you feel like in that case, like there are levels 
like the cheaper cameras, you're gonna learn what you need yeah. to learn there and then go up and the more and more expensive stuff gets, like you learn it more as you go. Yeah. And there's some stuff, like some cameras just have uh, programs in it that you might not even need to use. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You just buying this camera um, expense wise because you think it's gonna perform higher quality mm -hmm. when you really you just need another lens. Okay. Do you feel like in that case, like people who can't afford their photography services, like what would you say before they come to you would be their best bet? Like an iPhone, a GoPro? Mm hmm okay. iPhone. iPhone. Every time. Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie to you. iPhone's going crazy right now. Just um I seen you had the gimbal earlier. Mm -hmm. You can spend eighty dollars on the gimbal for that, use your iPhone and just master it. You know what I'm saying? You, you got it at home, you probably just playing around with it, it's cool, but you could really master things like that. Mm -hmm. And that would save you so much bread. You know what I'm saying? Understand that light is just light. I got these studio lights in here, but really do I, do I need it? Mm -hmm. You could buy Home Depot lights. I seen the shoot you did with the dude in the backyard. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. One light, that was you? Mm -hmm. Wow, I love that shoot. I was like, man, that's so creative. But like getting the visuals, getting it, like hey, we didn't just put the pictures of the shoot out and be like, hey, here's some nice pictures. like. Let me show y'all what it took to get these pictures out. We sitting around in the backyard yeah. with a backdrop and chairs, sun setting. So you was using that natural light for that shoot? Actually, I didn't. I use I, For that shoot, I still use studio lighting because I wanted to get a studio effect. My whole reason for that shoot was just kind of be like, this to show that it's like when it comes to spaces, a lot of people feel like they don't have the, the space or the uh, the materials to make to do certain shoots. Like um, Now we got like rent a studio out here and stuff like that. But I remember growing up, they won't know where to really do studio. Portrait. Something kind of like this, where other mm -hmm. photographers can go and and rent. I was looking to do something like that. Like I'm looking to do like a big conglomerate kind of podcast studio, photography yeah. studio, like event space where people could just like, hey, if you want to have a big meeting with like 54x people, or I get the podcast yeah. where we got a live audience, they come in and see us. Because matter of fact, like I'm actually going out of town tomorrow, but last year around the same time I, I was in Atlanta. And I'm at somebody's event space, and it turns out that that's where they shoot the social proof. And it's like, I was there before even the inception of the podcast, and how dope it ended up becoming. I'm like, yeah. damn, like, you know, like you be in these circles, you don't even know. So like, mm -hmm. who do you feel like you've met? Like, what what type of circles have you been in? You know, due to your due to your um lane. Ooh, circles. Uh, I think I met like. Uh, I met a lot of people that's in like fashion and stuff like that. Okay. You know, I think that's a good and even rappers. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think that's like a that's like a cool thing where they can kind of like, you know, what I'm saying, come together and collab and kind of have everybody. I'm big on like the collaboration thing. Like, you know, what I'm saying, I don't need to go hire outside of, you know, what I'm saying, this zone where I have people here. You know, what I'm saying, that I know. Absolutely. You know, what I'm saying. That should get costly, man, getting people to fly out, Bruh. stuff like that. But I'm looking forward to it because I got a couple of people that I'm excited to have on. You know, I don't know if I even told you, like, one of my mans in New York does all the hosting and, and, and weddings and event planning for, like, yeah. pretty much all the events in New York. I'm going to get him, like, as soon as the year starts. So, you know, we got a bunch of stuff coming up. And, like, Really, my last question is, like, how much time do you feel like you have, you know, for anybody who's in the area and they want to book you for a shoot? Like, would you say, like, hey, first come, first serve? Like, get them out of yeah. the way? I say, you know, not not just first come, first serve, you know what I'm saying? I definitely, you know what I'm saying, DM, DM the book for right now. Um, but we'll work out, we can work out a plan, work out a schedule. You know, so I'm pretty flexible. You know, I, I sleep during the day or I sleep at night, whatever I have to do mm, to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, because this, this is my life, you know what I'm saying? And you travel. Like, if somebody was like, hey, I'm going to this city for this shoot and I want you to be there, kind of just get the whole, mm -hmm. me speaking at an event, you'll do it all? Do it all. I was uh, probably about two months ago, or not, nah, yeah, about two months ago, I was just in Pittsburgh to, uh, and I did a shoot out there. Uh, and I got some events coming up as well, so. We can try to be everywhere, especially with this new year coming up. Hey, man, I really appreciate you for coming through. I really think you should, like, delve more into, like, the, the teaching and the professionalism, like, how you develop the film, like, how you yeah. got to where you are, like, using your YouTube channel, like, kind of those same people you were talking about earlier, like, the same people that motivated you. I'm sure it's a lot of people out here just from listening to this podcast episode or, like, watching your YouTube channel will definitely get enough gems on, like, how to start their photography business. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, I mean, let the people know where they can find you, where they can book you, um, 
where they can see your work? Because I know you said you got your website up already, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah, so like I said, my name's KC. You can uh, find my Instagram at KSweez. It's going to be K A S W E E Z E. Uh, my website is ksweez.com. Uh, you can go up there and, you know what I'm saying, view all my stuff and everything. Uh, yeah, if you need film developed, prices are in my bio, on my Instagram, everything. So I'm, I'm looking to work. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Chess Moves, episode 25, yeah. whatever the fuck, you know. Yeah. I appreciate you, brother. All right. Gucci, Gucci. How much time we got?